This is Sarah Poff and those art hands. So I wanted to show you how to make a little bit uh, bigger Easter basket and show you some uh, ways that um, you might be able to uh, come up with something that you have on hand to make those with. So we used to make them with Clorox bottles. I don't have an empty one. I have several around my house that are full, but none of them that are empty. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to create a little bunny Easter basket. So I want the ears to come clear up here. Sometimes if I don't want to use the permanent marker to begin with, I um, use my finger and kind of think about that. I could use a crayon too. Um, then come around. So I want this in the back because that's where the label, see that's where the label was. I worked on a different background hoping that you could see better. Ah, right there. You can see that right there. Okay. So I'm hoping that the blue background uh, allows things to be seen easier. I used to use that a lot at school when I was shooting at school. Okay. So I'm going to, you know, you, sometimes you need to measure, but I don't want to use a ruler. I don't know about you. I'm just not the ruler kind of girl. So I'm going to use this part of my marker. I'm going to take a different marker to mark it with. Okay. So let's turn it around here. And make a little line. And just keep it going all the way around. Uh, like I said, you can figure, figure out maybe you have, uh, maybe you don't have a wipe container like this. This had um, Clorox wipes in it. Uh, we used to make the same thing, like we're going to make, out of bleach bottles. Back in those old days. I'm sure if I went out there into my stash of magazines, I could find some of those. Alright, so I did this, and I took it all the way around. So I will take my scissors down in there and cut that in a minute. However, I do want to get those ears on. And remember, I want this, this right here where the label was. I didn't take time to get it totally off, so I want that in the back. So I'm going to turn this around, and now I'm going to do ears. And I think I'm going to do this purplish pink. And I'm just going to do a leaf shape. Kind of a leaf shape. All right, now this one's a little bigger than this one. I can uh, fix that later if I want, or I can fix it now. I guess I can fix it now. Okay, you could cut this out if you're concerned that you won't do it right. Cut this out of paper and lay it on there and then trace it. Okay, now on the next part, the hardest thing to, to cut with these kinds of items are this right here to cut through this part right here i'm going to use my funky scissors uh, a bigger heavier duty pair of scissors will also work um a knife might work but be careful if you do a knife okay i'm going to start over here let's see let's start over here on the edge of this leaf uh leaf uh -huh. on the edge of the bunny's ear i'm going to go a little bit outside of where I did before because I want to I want to be able to have a chance to maybe smooth it smooth that out some all right so I'm gonna go over here a little bit further and I'm gonna cut up to there now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna bend it a little see if I can get a little more flexible then I'm gonna stick my scissors in here and I'm going to cut around. Alright. So now I've got that first chunk out of there. 
right, so now I want to come over and I want to do another chunk like that. And I'm not going to worry about how even it is right now. I want to get it a little bit above where I made the line. Because right now I'm more concerned about getting that chunk out than I am the actual shape I want. Of course, I don't want it to be below it if I can help it at all. All right. So there. All right, so let's see. I'm going to take these smaller scissors because I think the kids could even cut this once you've started it and, and got the bigger part off. You could let them go after it. Well, evidently not. I thought I had done that before, but maybe it was a different container. Ah! Here we go, here we go. See how I'm smoothing that off? You just gotta go at the right angle to get that. So some angles work and some angles don't. Okay, now let's see if I can take those little scissors, kid scissors, and go back through here. Try to carefully Cut. trying to cut about where that line is or maybe just a tad below it so I won't see it you're gonna probably you're gonna need to have a little bit better kind of scissors an adult pair of scissors so maybe the kids can't do as much of it as I had originally thought. I'm going to use my funky scissors. These are supposed to, and I actually have cut a penny. These are supposed to cut a penny. I actually have done that with this. Now, let's cut down in between these ears, like that. Now, I am going to go get my Fiskars. So I'll be right back. I have a little pair of Fiskars and I'm going to see if that works a little better for us. Sometimes if one thing doesn't work, you got to work another thing. You got to you got to get in there and try something else. All right. So that is cutting. So a stronger pair of scissors is in order for this project. You can use my funky scissors, something like them, uh, or see, I can cut really good with this if you want it to be smooth. However, do not use, do not use your sewing scissors or they won't be sewing scissors anymore. I don't know how many pairs of sewing scissors I've messed up because I've used them with my crafts. Of course, I do a lot more crafts than I do sewing. So it does take a little time to do this. It's not a real super, super quick. Um, the plastic is a little harder to come through than other, other items. So it would take an older child that you trusted with those bigger scissors before you would want them to do it. Unless, of course, the container that you found to make your Easter basket out of is thinner than the, the one I have. So the Fiskars, these little Fiskars are the right move for me. 
All right. So there we go. Now we have that part made. All right. So I think he is going to have this purplish. Let's see what it's called. Uh, it doesn't even have the name of the paint of the marker color on there. It looks to me it looks more purple in this. It has a little bit more of the pinkish color in there. And like anything else that's plastic like this, you want to not touch it for a little bit after you color this in. I'm just going to color this in. And I'm going to blow on it just a just a little and that'll help it help it go faster. Okay, now I'm going to do this. Did anybody else out there ever do this before? Of course, back in the 60s, we didn't have as many supplies. We didn't have a Hobby Lobby or a Michaels or any of that. My understanding from my mom, because she got she had a florist who gave her something so that she could do some crafts. My understanding is that there's a lot of those things that they had a tight hold on. Uh, the supply, the people who like florists and people like that, you had to be a wholesaler to get a hold of some of those things. And so that's one of the reasons we didn't have a lot of supplies around until later on. And later on we were able to um, to have those supplies. I remember going to some early craft uh, shops in the, in the late 60s and boy did we have a good time. Because mom was always doing some kind of craft with us. Okay, so now I have my ears. Okay, let's give him some eyes. Gonna do some upside down U shapes. And like this. You know what I think I'm gonna do? I am going to change that to a black dot. Oh, that's even fun. I've got a little bitty um, bit of the blue. It's a it's a dark darker blue that you can see. Now something I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here, but something I always do when I'm doing things like this is I stick my little finger out. My little finger. That is my stabilization of what I'm doing. That's my stabilization. All right, let's see. What kind of nose does he need? I don't have as much variety as I might like in these permanent markers, but we're trying to do with what we have, right? Oh, I think this will work. Okay, whiskers. Hmm. Maybe we'll just make them black. And see, I'm going to like, I can flow better because I want one line that I just kind of flow across. Because I get one chance at this, one chance. On each of those lines, I only get one chance. All right, now does he need a little bit of a tongue shape down here? Oh, I think I'm gonna do this. I like this better. Because on one of the bunnies, I put a tongue up close to him and it it uh, was a little bit confusing on how it looked. 
All right. Well, this is my chloral, chloral. Oh man, sometimes that southern draw and that twisted tongue gets in my way. We made this from a Clorox container that has the wipes in it, and we've got a little Easter basket. Now I've got a little Easter grass, but I'm not sure that's enough. So I'm going to stick something in there first. And then we're going to put our Easter grass on top. Oh, we forgot to draw his tail. And I just decided with this, because this is something I'll probably put up in my, um, oh, you know, no, I, I, I was going to say this was sticky. It is sticky. There's a little bit of sticky there from, um, from when I took that tag off. Let's see if I've got some polyfill left. I think I do. Oh, there go all the Easter eggs. All the Easter eggs. Oh, there's a bow. Oh, I don't find my polyfill, but you can put polyfill on the back there for him, you or her. Um, we could add a little bow, like right here by it. You know, if you made your face up a little bit more, you could actually glue that to it. For his tail, here's sir, her tail. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take my marker and do like that. And that's what I was saying when you pack it away. That kind of tail is going to last a lot longer anyway than the other kind. So this is my Easter basket made from that wipe container. Thanks for watching today. This is Sarah Poff and those art hands. You have a great day now.